Okay. Hello, everybody. Um, today we kind of cover the basics in uh, one large run. We uh, literally have today uh, a double block on design, quality, and resource management. Yeah. Um, my, my lecture really focuses a little bit on the lean way. Yeah, there, there is a reason behind that. Uh, um, uh, one being that in project management, we often don't have very, well, when I say we often don't, we actually do in some countries. Uh, the, this, this is a cultural question in how refined your quality is actually to the project or surrounding environment. Yeah, I will try to explain that a little bit. And uh, design thinking or design is an important element to understand that. So to potentially translate as well the literature into your application, uh, wherever you want to apply it. Yeah? So I've done that a little bit along the lean way. Uh, has to do with quite a few factors. We, we have at this university a huge uh, um, uh, literature and uh, well, uh, uh, research emphasis on lean. This is really where it originates from. Yeah, so um, let's have a look at design thinking, uh, which is not fully lean. This is uh, a little bit more independent. It's, it's a cool thing, and I have precisely uh, um, translated that with uh, a lean way to doing it. Yeah? And we will try to make sense of that, of course. Yeah? And design thinking is, of course, the stuff of power. Yeah? When you realize that, then uh, uh, there's nothing that can hold you back. Yeah? So why design thinking? Well, um, there, there is a famous quote, this is actually from an American president, arguably, uh, where we have no resources, we have to <coughs> think. Yeah, and that, that was really uh, um, the notion, uh, thinking outside of the box, yeah, so emphasizing that the boxes that we had created initially weren't really fitted and that we needed probably a new frame of reference to think about it. Yeah, and we're doing so uh, uh, by gaining interest in many uh, project-based industries recently. Yeah, that this is a big topic. Design thinking is art de vogue, if you want. Yeah? So we try to get at the moment our head around that. And uh, there's a good reason behind it. Our standardized systems are being outperformed. Yeah? So let, let's think a little bit about that. Why do we first standardize and then I, I say that they are outdated or outperformed? What, what do you do with standardization potentially in designs? Mass produced. Yeah, mass produce. It's kind of good. People recognize it for what it is. Now, this is a good starting point. But then you can compare as well. And then one design may win over the other. Yeah? So you can see that probably in uh, um, uh, products like uh, um, mobile phones or um, the, the most uh, um, reappearing one is probably uh, close industry. Yeah? So fashion industry, you see that, uh, that we repeatedly uh, kind of compete uh, how we dress. The interesting thing is uh, um, that some designs are actually kind of timeless. Uh, so in, in close, what, what would be a timeless design? Glove. A glove. Okay, you, you think of the function, yeah? The, this is a step uh, further, yeah? But you, you think along the right lines. That is already kind of untangling design thinking. What, what is uh, um, kind of always the same, which has probably not changed for, I would even reckon, for 800 <laughs> years in fashion. We always had the same intent. We have changed slightly the fabric, but it looks still roughly the same. Jeans. Pardon? Jeans. Okay, not an 800 years, but uh, uh, last 50 years, yeah? yeah, you're quite right, yeah? Oil industry has introduced uh, uh, jeans to us, yeah? This is an institution that is more recent, and it's still there. Although it has changed, we have manipulated the jeans. It's now kind of cool to have holes in it. Whereas in the past, we bought new jeans when we had holes in them, yeah? So the, that's a change in emphasis here. But uh, um, maybe a more recent one. Like two, was it, oh. This is embarrassing. I should really know this. Well, when was the recent royal wedding? Last year. Okay, this is good. So last year, what, what did the princess have on? Was it last year? Two, two years ago. Okay. Hi, yeah, yeah. Okay, that was the nice the question uh, um, for me. Yeah, so um, what, what did the uh, princess have on? 
Yeah, yeah the rest, what kind? Wedding dress. Wedding dress, yeah. And what did it look like? White. White, yeah. <laughs> this is a good start, yeah. It's so profound, yeah. It's, but anyway, if you go back in history, in your children's book, you will see her dress design, yeah. But it's famously uh, re-established. Do you know how much it was? I like this. Yeah, it's it's roughly correct. It's a little bit less actually. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's no. Uh, half. Yeah. So uh, in a way, we pay a lot, but we do the same thing. So some designs are timeless. Yeah, you can see that her mother got actually married in a very similar dress. Actually, this is off cam on camera. I have to be careful. Yeah. There are small, subtle changes, but they are incremental. It's the same dress. Yeah, and the prince actually turned up in an army uniform designed, and again, if you go back in history, you will see it hasn't changed for the past 500 uh, years, really. In the past, we had a little bit more flowery stuff around us. Yeah, if you're interested in that, go into a museum and look at uh, paintings from old emporas, yeah, then, then you get an idea. Yeah, but uh, um, the, the, it stays a little bit the same. And in other areas, we, we have kind of this design thinking. We are reinventing ways how we are doing things before. Yeah? And uh, um, there, there is certainly as well this notion, and this is very important for us, for, for project managers, there is this separation between the design and the production. And that is a big thing. In the past, we didn't really do that so much. In the past, we, we had the production, and then we made slight changes. Yeah? But we, we certainly hadn't separated that completely. What, what is powerful? What, what do we design at the moment somewhere and uh, produce it somewhere else? Where do we do okay. that? Yeah, mobile phone. So uh, where, where does it get designed? It's on California, made in Asia. Oh, I like that. So uh, uh, California is a country and then somewhere assembled and manufactured in Asia. Oh, I think so. Yeah? So where, where do we do this? Is it always the same design and, and production? Or do we sometimes still do it together? Design and production. Yeah. So what, why have we divided it on that level? Because of cost. Yeah, cost. Cost is a good start. Yeah. Hey, yeah, yeah. This was a good one. Yeah. So uh, uh, cheaper manufacturing costs. Yeah. You you said uh, already cheap labor. So it was a price implication. Yeah. There, there are uh, two uh, uh, dominating paradigms around really. Yeah. One is design and production, and one is actually focusing on production development. Now, it's a different scheme. It's a more linear method. Yeah. So separation of design and production was a notion of trying to really advance how we are doing things. Uh, I, I will try to get a little bit the head around it with, the, um, with of course, uh, the definitions. So making it work in projects is actually kind of easy. Uh, we will come to that in a second. So we, we have to think a little bit about what the design actually is. And I've given you, uh, you, you will see in a second, quite a few definitions. But before that, I, I want really you to think about it a little bit. So we had already uh, wedding dresses, yeah, we had uh, beautiful mobile phones and, and things like that. But it means really different things to different people. And uh, very uh, simple, if, if you ask around, this comes actually from a colleague from a, a different department. So um, <coughs> when we talked about design, there was a, a connotation of uh, a wallpaper pattern. Yeah, it's, it's, it's one. A fashionable dress, potentially. Yeah, the, uh, maybe not to, uh, the other example wasn't that fashionable. Uh, then the appearance of a racing car, and there are many more. What, what others do we have? What, what do you associate in terms of products with design? Anything? Yeah, there are loads of answers. Uh, well, what, what do you have in mind when you think of design? Building design. Yeah, building design, yeah. And, and what would a building design look like that, that would be kind of under this design heading? Yeah, is what is it? the question, actually? 
Yeah, what, what is the design? Like, you know, what, what uh, do you think of in terms of a building? Do you think of every building? Do you think like this has been designed as well? Obviously, uh, every single bi building design, isn't it? We're not uh, in the mass production. <coughs> yeah. Not, uh, I mean, unless it's a specific uh, type of uh, housing or work. So who does normally design? De de architect. Architect. Yeah. Yeah. Do, do we talk about design and build in, in houses? More recently, yeah. yeah, it's new. Mm -hmm. Construction has just e e uh, 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 seen this, yeah, the, the first time. Mm -hmm. Well, not really the first time. But traditionally, you said quite rightly, um, it's the architect mm -hmm. that kind of like gives us an idea, yeah, makes probably a sketch, and, and gives us a, a vision. And normally, design is associated with buildings that look completely strange. So traditionally, this is associated with the Bauhaus movement. Uh, ca came from Germany uh, uh, to a degree. Yeah, it, it was a movement of living in glass boxes, uh, and uh, effectively summarized. Yeah, yeah Mies van der Rohe. Yeah, Mies van, uh, so who was that, Mies van der Rohe? That was an architect who actually designed a kind of a conception in the 60s about this glass that you can uh, be integrated with the nature. Yeah. American. Yeah, he's from. Uh, oh, this is debatable. <laughs> yeah, he lived actually in America, yeah, but uh, uh, Dutch in origin America, yeah. and lived really in Belgium, but uh, in between, yeah. But good, very good uh, reference. Yeah, Mies van der Rohe came up with this concept: we want to live in nature, so why don't we live integrated in nature rather than building big castles around us? Yeah. Yeah, that, that was kind of new stuff. Yeah. Okay, so building potentially glass box. Yeah, that, that was of course framed for me. Maybe I want one other design. Then we can move on. What do you think of in design? Furniture. Furniture, yeah, I like this. Okay. <laughs> well, what would be a cool design that you're thinking of with furniture? A nice chair. A nice chair. <laughs> yeah. Speakers building the furniture, no. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I was really thinking of explicit examples. Probably, uh, i give you a quick one. There is a white armchair from IKEA. They have optimized it. Yeah, it's cheap. I, I kind of see it in a lot of flats, and it seems to have a comfort. Uh, it looks a little bit futuristic. Yeah? The, um, ha have a look uh, uh, around. Uh, there are quite a few armchairs, but there's one that is quite outstanding that everybody has an appeal to. And it's a newer design. Yeah. But furniture is another one, yeah? Okay, we, we, we move a little bit on. So what is design, really? Yeah? Um, I, I want you to uh, design, uh, uh, come up with a definition on this. Yeah? I'm, I'm a little bit... It's easy to not realize how implicit this is. First of all, I want you to consider a little bit what, what design actually is. Why do we need it in the first place? And uh, uh, how, how do we best go about it? It's quite difficult to communicate about it. That's so implicit. Let, let's think maybe about an uh, uh, implication of that. Let's think about a tree. The tree where you grew up, what does it look like? Yeah, the tree next to the place where you may have grown up. A tree? Brown? Yeah? Brown and green. This is a good start. Leaves. Branches. Apples. I like it. So in your case it was an apple tree. Do people know what an apple tree is? This is good. He's communicating uh, design quite sufficient. Uh, it's a description of the world around us. It's implicit. It gets a little bit more difficult. Yeah? In, in South Africa, I lived next to a nut tree. To describe that, I have to admit, I looked actually the biologic term up. Yeah? There's a Latin acronym for it. But it's probably very meaningless to, to most of us. Yeah? So design is an implicit notion. A tree, debatable if it's designed, actually. Yeah? We have tried to do so in the past with manipulating how they grow. We still do so, actually, in... in uh, uh, farming, for example, apples or, or something like that. Yeah, um, but that is probably quite an odd example. So let, let's come a little bit to terms with it. Discuss briefly with your neighbor 
and try to come up with a definition what design is. We have touched on elements, what design is, yeah, in, in embodied forms around us, maybe even in our industry. But what is it actually? Yeah? Have a brief discussion. I want a few definitions. And then we have a rampage through my definitions that I have found, of course, in literature. Yeah? Two, two minutes. Yeah? Okay, brilliant. Uh, I, I can see we have started something and, and some people still discuss. But what, what were maybe the uh, discussion points that you came across with design? Can, can we have a few examples just to get our head around this? What is this mysterious design? Yeah? State of mind that contains some attributes. That is very deep. Yeah, I, I like that. <laughs> very, very good. Uh, uh, maybe another one? Yeah. Idea or concept? To do what? Yeah, to do something. I, I would be happy with its ambiguity, but I would add that to do something or to have something. Yeah. Okay, maybe another one? Uh, yeah, did you have more concrete ones? For, uh, creation or the beginning of something new. Okay, so something new, yeah? That, this is quite interesting as well. Creation. Is that, is that right? Yeah, or change. Okay, creating or changing something to something new. Now, this is already quite good. So you, you can tell a lot of you have already thought about it. Where were there some other, like, uh, outstanding ones, yeah? Okay, it goes in the same, th this is already quite thought about, yeah? I'm quite impressed with this. Uh, the, the answers were already like quite sophisticated. Uh, it's, it's, I could really like save the next three slides here. Uh, um, okay, so what, what did I come up with? Um, design is really, uh, uh, we have recognized it as a cultural thing that we try to capture. Yeah, the the uh, um, most recent <coughs> modern art exhibition had as a concept design and uh, they defined it ways of doing things. Uh, so that is quite cryptic, but it's a cultural thing. It seems to uh, um, have something to do with how groups or individuals actually define uh, um, the way of doing something. Uh, so it's still quite cryptic. I, I will try to um, make it a little bit more concrete. Uh, design will be recognized as well the problem with this. Design is often so obvious that it's almost invisible. Yeah, and uh, it surrounds us really in what we do. It's uh, um, essential for our survival. It's a lot of strategies that keep us alive. Now they're designed or engineered, if you want to use a different term, but uh, um, there, there's a difference between this. Yeah? And it's a very powerful tool yeah, that is at our disposal. Yeah, if you don't have anything, you certainly have the power to come up with a new design. Yeah, this, this is a, a very strong thing. 
then uh, um, yeah this is a classical one um, it's it's something that is very difficult to teach except by trying to do established things in a new way yeah that that can be kind of the starting point but design is something very self-evolving and uh, um, yeah, it's, it's really shaping the world around us. Yeah, so to make the world work in the shortest possible time, this is already the efficiency drive behind it, through spontaneous cooperation without ecological offense or the disadvantage of anyone. Yeah, so suppose um, Alex would like that as well under the point of uh, sustainability. And then uh, um, we have the recognition that design really manifests itself to us in aesthetics and the structure of doing things. Uh, so it's still um, quite process focused or, or getting there. Yeah? Um, design is as well a verb that uh, uh, conceives ways to optimize human existence. Uh, they, they actually go into that with learning itself. So it's, it's quite highbrow still. Um, the, the purpose uh, of design is to enhance communication. So we have to recognize it as a function. Yeah, so there's something opposite. We can as well design to deceive us, but that becomes actually very difficult. When we had the portfolio seminar, there was a group that uh, um, wanted to run a restaurant where it deceives the senses, the taste, the food. What was that again? Do, do you remember that? So what was it about? I like that you try to pinpoint somebody else. You can just answer the question. <laughs> so what, what was the meal about? Okay, I will do the summary. The, uh, um, it, it was literally designing food that we are very familiar with, that we recognize straight away, but then have a completely different taste because it's made of different food. No? So design is as well as powerful as having a decisive nature, yeah? And uh, uh, th this was uh, quite, yeah, uh, I just had the university there. This is quite sad. It's actually in the advertisement. Design is keeping everybody happy, or at least uh, as happy as possible. Uh, so they iterated that already. I think they started first with keeping everybody happy, mm -hmm. realized that it's quite tough, you know, and then keep being happy as many as possible. Uh, so. Um, Last but not least, I have as well uh, um, a dictionary uh, def uh, um, definition. It's a particular purpose held in view by an individual or group. We had that already in our, your uh, definitions. This was quite good, yeah? yeah actually, the, the definition came from there. Yeah? Uh, and then um, deliberate purposeful planning is even sometimes an element. And a mental project or scheme in which means to an end are laid down. Uh, so it's not necessarily the product itself. It's a way of getting there. Yeah? Then I have some more uh, uh, design as a shared activity. This comes now a little bit more to our project environment. Yeah? Um, design is that area of a human experience, skill and knowledge, which is concerned with man's ability to mold his environment to suit his material and spiritual needs. Yeah? If you understand this completely, then you will be able to innovate the world with new products and, uh, um, well, if you're after wealth, which you probably won't be if you uh, um, understand that, uh, you, you will realize that uh, it's very easy to fill our world with products that fulfill those. And then you have a mass market. Yeah? So th it's a very powerful concept. The other one is, of course, all initiate change in the man-made things. Yeah? So um, doing similar things in a better way. Uh, I will give you one really strange example, maybe, to, to show you how far design has gone. If, if you study uh, um, uh, tribes that have lived kind of at the export of, of tough weathers, and they were, uh, for example, traveling a lot in tents, yeah, then you will see that one design to actually problem solve a terrible storm on your tents, and you didn't have much technology, was actually holding hands and singing. Uh, so you recognize you couldn't do anything about it, but at least the spirit was up. You know, the thing kept you together, that you didn't run out madly and were hit by the thunder, uh, by, by the, uh, um, by the, uh, oh, yeah, yeah, I forgot the name. Yeah, by the lightning, yeah, anyway. So that, that was literally one design solution. 
we have now improved. Yeah? We, we can build actually shelter that can uh, um, deal with storms. Sometimes we don't spend enough time and money to actually build this. Yeah? We have seen that sadly uh, very recently in an uh, application of a big storm. Yeah? So um, there, there is a notion that design processes can to a degree be translated in problem solving processes and, and that is a very powerful thing. So um, when we break it down from that we have to of course think about the processes of making making stuff happen. This is what we are all about. It's about project management implementation is our strength of course, you know. So design process as a problem solving a process has something to do normally we would assume with consultation on consensus. You are already a lead at this, yeah? Well, if, if you did like stakeholder management at the beginning of the semester, if you apply that, you're on a very good way. We will have a wonderful, you, you will see, you will drive the world to new heights, yeah? But as, as part of it, of course, yeah? And then identification and analysis of the problem is often a need, which can be difficult. Yeah? We, we have smart ways of doing that. And then it follows often with a structured sequence. Is this always true, though? This is a big question. Yeah? The, our, our research actually identifies probably a few gaps with this process. It's not always like that. But a structured sequence, yeah, informed uh, uh, information is researched, ideas are explored, evaluated, until the optimum solution or, or the time is pressing, so the solution will do the job, fit for purpose, yeah? Then you basically um, devise it and, and bring it out, yeah? So, the, the, the reality in design studies, and in particular in our construction industry with uh, architects, you, you pointed already out, it's the architects that do the design, yeah? But this is exactly the problem. It became kind of an elite uh, um, uh, activity. It was perceived that we, we have to separate somehow the mind from the hand. And that is quite frankly quite dramatic. We have seen that in a lot of products, in some industries, this was a good idea. No, you, you make a design and you build it. It's quite task oriented and broken down. In other, other areas that was quite disastrous. We realized that actually the hands, the building, it's a really tough part, yeah, and the separation was kind of dangerous. Yeah? Um, I, I won't give too many controversial examples, but there are many. Yeah? So um, design isn't always a, a rational process. It's often chaotic, yeah? and uh, consultation and contrary, uh, consensus barely happened. Yeah? Uh, we, we don't have a lot of evidence of that. When they do happen, they're often quite good, but they don't happen a lot. So this is a big problem. Yeah, in some cases we have even design competitions, then you're just voting the favorite design. Yeah? It doesn't really mean that they have necessarily done the consultation. If they have done it well, then they have consulted, of course. Yeah? Um, design was not a total process in itself, so what I've uh, um, kind of opened up for you doesn't often happen. Yeah? Then another one was the compen Compartmentalization, it means like you, you have architecture, you have one professional that, that does it, for example, which is a danger. Yeah, so we, we know now design and build is all about integrating the design team, which is still lacking. Yeah, the next step is really to integrate everybody. So in the design team, we have now as well the civil engineer and uh, um, other professionals involved that, ha that have a huge impact yeah, on, on the actual outcome. So um, it came as well in other industry down to experts, uh, uh, experts impose constraints. Then sometimes you have uh, veto processes. Yeah, so where um, actually um, experienced designers yeah, uh, uh, vote your design, which is a dilemma. Yeah, this is uh, uh, just like a, um, a manifestation. It's a normative approach depending on, on uh, how you go around it. Yeah, so it means that uh, the innovation has to be in the remit of the previous designer. Yeah, so that is quite interesting. So it's a social uh, bubble, uh, which I described there. And the result is many designs did little to, satisfies, uh, to satisfy the need, of course, of the users or customers. Yeah, this is our big challenge. You, you know already how to go about this with stakeholder management. Yeah? So in a way, we, we have a, a good starting point there. 
but let's have a little bit a look really at the uh, uh, um, elements that lie behind it. Yeah, so uh, a sharp reaction against the design movement. Yeah, this, this is really what it was. Um, in, in construction, we had that. I, I mentioned Bauhaus there. In that context, um, we, we had that in many industries. Yeah, we we had like uh, new, what other design products came out maybe in the. 40s, 50s, 60s that we don't use anymore. I think kind of at the beginning of the lecture series, it was the first lecture, I think, to, to have a few products that actually came out from new designs. Yeah, Zeppelin. Oh, this is a this is an interesting one. I didn't have a Zeppelin though, but I like the example. Yeah, so the Zeppelin was. What, what was the design for? Flying. Yeah, flying. To make us fly. Yeah? The Zeppelin was the output, yeah, the product, but it was designed and shaped to actually have like a gas in the top yeah, that would be lighter than, uh, um, yeah, than us, I suppose, yeah? the, uh, to, to keep it very simple, and, and carry us uh, uh, by flying basically with the engine uh, to, to our uh, destination where we want to go. Yeah? The, the most famous one for mass uh, pro, um, transport was probably uh, the jumbo jet. Yeah, and the famous one is uh, the 747. It's actually in this art exhibition where I talked about it. Yeah? It's, it's one of the design artifacts. Yeah? So this is quite, uh, uh, I think this is brilliant. That's actually bought one. Yeah? It, it's a Boeing 747, I should add. Yeah? So Air, Airbus is probably heartbroken on that account, but it's okay. So uh, yeah, may, maybe another product? Yeah, that, that is my personal favorite, yeah, that, that we have abandoned, unfortunately. It was too dangerous. Rocket engines, they, they kind of, it's a, it's a mixed feeling thing, you know, like literally you, you foil an explosive. Uh, that, that is kind of like where people were not quite comfortable with that idea. Yeah? Although I still think, brilliant idea, yeah. Are there designs that have disappeared? Okay, there are many, yeah. So Pac-Man is one, that yeah, was quite an interesting one. Uh, um, other ones could be as well. The bicycle kind of disappeared in the 40s and 50s. We built cities actually for cars. Then we reinvented the uh, bicycle, uh, which is interesting. Uh, so there, there are different uh, um, elements that kind of um, yeah, came and, and went again. And they were always like with a certain focus. Yeah? And that focus has been altered. Yeah? So um, individuals really sought to express their own taste through what they use and buy. This is where we have arrived, and this is why quality is kind of dead. Yeah? I, I, I will talk about quality. It's important for us for project management. But what that means is, if you produce a project with a design, and you have a product or service or capability that you're running, and somebody pays for it, this is it. The business circle is closed. Yeah? So there, there, there is a, a, an implication. Yeah? So businesses are run on the simple notion that you make a profit. It doesn't have to be a big profit. You have to be profitable. That, that is the only, I think, uh, as far as I know, it's the only legal uh, premises uh, that, that we can worldwide kind of agree on. And uh, the larger your company is, no, I shouldn't say that on camera, but uh, anyway, there, there's, uh, there, there's this is where something was turned over where profit is not so important anymore, but uh, um, yeah, that, that's a different discussion. Yeah. But uh, what, meant, what did that mean? Uh, this design, not an activity solely for engineers and designers, yeah? because people did actually their own stuff potentially, and uh, local stuff became kind of popular. Yeah? But a shared activity between those who design, those who make, and those who use it. This is a bottom line of successful project management. If you write that on your flag, in project management you have reached the baseline and we will be profitable. You have to do the math, of course, behind it. Yeah? I hope that makes sense. Yeah? So the key components of this yeah, uh, um, are means to an end, yeah? with a defined goal or a result behind it. Sometimes it's a product, service, or a capability. Yeah? Then a mental uh, thinking process, the designing itself. Yeah? And then it, it's, of course, a plan, a scheme that is inferred. 
uh, distinct from implementation in, in some ways, yeah? but still, you know, the, the, there is a notion of that too. Yeah? And then, of course, you have the invention coming up with something new. Or at least partly. Yeah? Sometimes it's modular. You use existing components and assemble them in a new way that is more appealing. Yeah? The iPhone. Ta-da! Yeah? So um, uh, uh, that, that was effectively what it was. Yeah? They, they really understood that. The, the attempt of defining, of course, the design completely is not really uh, an uh, uh, exercise to do because it has really moved due to the times. So you, you see the cultural dimension. But for us to actually deal with it, we, we can adopt it and we can use it for our planning and uh, um, yeah, creativity purpose-driven undertakings. Yeah? So a design, is a, a, a design problem, is a real-life problem yeah, that we can actually tackle with solutions, uh, uh, with many solutions, some better, some worse. Yeah? So sometimes it's a wrong problem. This is as well important to recognize. Yeah? And so, uh, a, a solution process is not mechanistic. Yeah? Sometimes there are shortcuts, but there are ways of guiding us towards it, of course. Yeah? And, uh, of course, uh, um, in the long run, you often try to optimize it, yeah? to make it more appealing, to make it a um, dominant solution. Yeah? So to go a little bit back, uh, in, as children, we, we are quite happy to design our houses with sand or a cardboard box. Yeah? But uh, uh, when your um, friend comes around and he builds a more sophisticated cardboard house, you're kind of like a little bit in doubt of your design. Yeah? You want to play with his cardboard house. I hope that makes sense. Yeah? So the more optimized the solution, so mm -hmm. the more attractive, uh, the easier they are to handle, the more appealing they are, of course. Yeah? That is a very simple example. Yeah? So, in a way, we, we are after a process of action and reflection here. And, and if we integrate that, we are in a good way. Yeah? So, what do I mean by that? Fundamental cycle, propose an idea, evaluate and criticize it, define sub-problems, analyze them, yeah? uh, propose solutions, hardest aspect is often formulating the problem, which you have already recognized, probably. Yeah? We, we did that at the beginning of the semester as well. And uh, this is always the heartbreaking thing, and it depends on the culture, and I will uh, uh, give you a, a small insight to that. There is no one right answer. Yeah? So examination of existing designs is often part of that uh, um, process to, to actually iterate it, but this is as well destroying the, destroying the um, creativity potentially. If you look at a lot of solutions, you kind of get a pre-perception what the solution should look like. Now, a real strong design is often coming without looking too long at uh, um, existing designs to the problem. What, what is such an example? So um, there is no one right uh, uh, answer to this. This is quite unsettling, isn't it? Um, it comes really from uh, uh, different processes being like different ways of getting to the same solution. Yeah, if, if you compare different industries, for example, or, or the same industry actually, for example, automotive yeah, in Germany, in, in comparison to Great Britain, in comparison to Japan, you will see that a project manager is a very different person. In Japan, you are visionary. You inspire. You leave them to get on with it. Your team members, technicians, have done a seven-year apprenticeship of refining and understanding the tools and techniques that they're using. You empower them to get on with it. In UK, do we do the same? No. We break down, we instruct very often. How long are our apprenticeships? It depends. If you have luck, you have like a training course in the first two weeks. Yeah? And then you will learn on the job. In Japan, after seven years apprenticeship, if you can't do it, what happens? You're being treated harshly, to say the least. Yeah? And in the UK, this is sometimes as well the strategy. Yeah? They, they speak louder at the person, but it doesn't lead necessarily to an insight. 
Yeah, so there are different implications, different infrastructure. Yeah, so if, if you don't have like um, this support, then you have to structure it more easily and break it down that people can actually cope with it. Now this is kind of the implication. Yeah, bo both arrive at wonderful cars. This is as well important to recognize, yeah? Okay. A commercial design approach is often uh, um, the question, is it a good or a bad design? Yeah, uh, And uh, um, the, the sad notion again is, often it comes down to we don't know unless you know the objectives and goals that we set out to be at the beginning. So we do that nowadays often with uh, commercial designs, customer driven. Yeah, So it's, it's literally the notion, customer wants and needs. It's actually more on the needs emphasis than the wants. And uh, um, often the goals and uh, um, time frames are, are heavily evaluated against uh, um, the return on the investment. Yeah, so products or services are literally drawn towards the customer demand. Yeah? Um, it explains as well a lot the design implication, why some clients may not understand or like the designer's approach. Yeah? The, you, you had your own experience with it at the beginning of the semester. This may not have been uh, uh, so enjoyable initially. For some, it was probably enjoyable. Yeah, it's a, a tough process to get your head around. And then, of course, uh, um, judging is, is is subjective. Yeah, so um, it's really a question if you want to go by it. Yeah, we we had the aesthetics uh, against it. Yeah, and, and how it's structured. So how can we actually manage this? Yeah, there there are a lot of tools and techniques to it, but I've shown you already that there are certain implications. Uh, the more you manage it, the, the less you are likely to arrive at completely unique ways of doing it. And this is, of course, a little bit uh, uh, um, a sad notion. Yeah? So, um, so although we, we come actually from a management poem, uh, point, uh, it's actually quite difficult to uh, um, uh, approach this. So I, I try to do that actually quite functional with lean. Yeah? So lean thinking. And, and design thinking in, in one way. And, and lean thinking is certainly one of those ways. So lean project delivery yeah, and uh, the lean design within it is like a, a major driving stage, really, of the process. It's an integrated process. Yeah? So uh, you can break it down in designing and producing customer needs and uh, concurrent engineering as an enabler. What, what is concurrent engineering? Has anybody come across that? Competitive? Is it? Well, the similar one. No, I'm not sure. Making things at the same thing. Yeah. Well, you, you have a focus yeah, to, to actually get the whole system right. It's a system focus <laughs> rather than individually uh, um, uh, getting it right. Yeah. So normally we, we modulize a system and try to optimize it. <laughs> the lean way is to look at the system and then optimize it for the system's sake. Yeah. Okay, so what, what is actually this uh, uh, lean design? It's an ongoing dialogue as a, as a basis. Yeah? So we, we are after mutual understanding, and it means as well that when problems emerge, uh, that, that you have a response that is mutual. Yeah? So you, it, it means you, you arrive at a shared understanding. Yeah? Then the process is governed by group meetings and teamwork. Yeah? Focus on I increasing the customer value. So this sounds kind of familiar. Also considers val uh, various alternatives product with process design. Yeah, so we, we look if we can actually replace or optimize parts of it to actually improve our system. Yeah? Um, and it's a set-based design strategy. Sharing incomplete information improves decision making. Yeah? So th this is a tough one. Yes? You, you get often pieces of information. And we had that in the puzzle game. Uh, that, that is actually tough to make a, a good informed decision. But it shows you uh, um, how it's actually built. Yeah? So it's a strong system if you get familiar with it. The concurrent product and process design uh, uh, can be broken down in a way. Yeah? Uh, uh, frequent communication of design outputs in small batch sizes. So um, this shortens as well set up time for review lowers. Uh, uh, WIP, what, what does that mean? 
yeah, very good. Oh, you had already, uh, yeah, of course, you, you had it with Eric. The, um, and, and then you have, of course, a, a detailed design of fabrication shifted to uh, the manufacturers or production personnel integrate this with the designer teams. Now this is of course when you come up with a product, uh, a prototype. Yeah? The, the whole idea behind that is avoids reworking and double work, but you have probably experiences as well in your teams. If you do that, it's quite time consuming to every time meet and look if the pieces actually fit. Yeah? So there's a lot of work caused by each other, to each other. I hope that makes sense. Yeah? So if somebody does a lot of changes and rework, you actually push, of course, the design. Yeah? So some of the tools and techniques are um, available for managing the design. Yeah? So the lean way include uh, um, uh, LPDS tools such as Last Planner, pull scheduling. Yeah, what, what is Last Planner? What does that mean? It's actually the keyword. Yeah? There's a whole methodology behind it. But what does the word uh, uh, imply? Last planner. The ones at the lower level who actually then do the work have the last detail. Yeah. So literally every time when the details are kind of confirmed, you, you go back and compare against the uh, um, uh, previous planned estimations yeah, and iterate it accordingly. Yeah? So if it took a lot longer against what you had planned, then you alter basically the work schedule or allocate resources accordingly. Well, it's a pretty cool system actually. Pull scheduling goes in a, a similar direction. Yeah, it's literally you, you, uh, when you have uh, finished something, you pull uh, the, the next work schedule up. Yeah, and, uh, um, yeah, so the, it, it's smart tools. Other ones, we, we came already along with them, uh, across them with project definitions cross-functional teams, yeah, so integrating uh, um, the, the different roles into a team, and uh, use of collaborative technologies, um, similar defi uh, uh, definition development tools, yeah, so really facilitating this, and set best design. Yeah. Design structure matrix is another one. Yeah. So those are key to, uh, keywords that you can really uh, start looking at the different tools if you want. Yeah. I suppose I, I wanted to have at least uh, um, one notion of the project definition and cross-functional teams because this is one that is very dear to me. Yeah? So to overcome the ill-defined and wicked problems in project definition, this phase for best result is carried out as a team decision process where project learning is based on collaborative argumentation and the reflection of processes. And in a way, this is what we did yeah, at the beginning of the semester. So you can reflect yourself on the process of, of the, if that was uh, something that was easy to do. Yeah, potentially that is one of the most powerful methods to actually getting a good design. Yeah. Okay, I, I, I want to have a brief break here to not overload you too much with it. And then we have a little look at quality and project management. Yeah. yeah. No. <laughs>